So today we're gonna to be talking about UV light or ultraviolet light and what that does for you, your plants, and your growing experience. And we've seen a lot of newer tech on the market these days that are showcasing their ability to involve UV light into your grow. Whether that's a standalone light or in addition to an existing LED light, they're really trying to figure out how to harness that power of the sunlight and give those effects to your plants. And we're gonna get into that a little bit later. But first, we're gonna start with the basics of UV light. Everyone's familiar with the visible light spectrum, which can be recorded between 400 nanometers and 700 nanometers. 400 being that violets and blues, all the way up to 700, which is like the oranges and reds. So if you think about it, if we expand that graph a little bit more, you're gonna see you know, infrareds and microwaves on that far red side. And then on the violet side, we're gonna see the ultraviolet range which is a smaller wavelength than visible light, so it packs a little bit more energy. Energy. The best way to describe UV light is having three different components. First off being UVA. That UVA light source happens between just under 400 nanometers down to 320, 315 nanometers. And with about 98.7% of that UV light reaching down to Earth, it is our most prevalent UV light that we're exposed to. Pretty mild compared to those other UV lights that we're gonna get into. So it does have some beneficial help to not only yourself, but your plants as well. The second component we're gonna be talking about is UVB, which runs in that 315, 314, down to about 280 nanometers. A lot more powerful than UVA, even though it's just a little step down. One photon of UVB light is worth 100 photons of UVA light, just to give you a, some kind of perspective about how much energy is actually in these wavelengths. Now, we don't get nearly as much UVB light reaching the surface of the Earth, only about 1.3%, which is good because it's a lot more powerful, like I said. This is the UV that really gives you those sunburns. Now, you can get UVA sunburned, but it's gonna take a lot longer. So if you are working with UVB rays, make sure you take care of yourself if you're outside put sunscreen on of course but if you're working with it indoors make sure you have proper eye protection um, and that's just like a little disclaimer for you finally uvc is the last part of the uv trio it occurs at just under 280 nanometers and down. It's the most strongest form of UV light, thousands of thousands of thousands of times stronger than UVA. Thankfully, those light rays don't reach the Earth's surface. They are completely soaked up by our Earth's atmosphere, which is good news because we'd be in big trouble if it wasn't. You can obtain UVC light uh, primarily with like sterilizing wands or you know some kind of form of disinfectant because that light energy is so powerful it like evaporates little uh, microorganisms so you can use it to maybe clean and disinfect your um, grow room but i would totally recommend keeping that away from your plants even keeping it away from you as much as you can uvc is so powerful it will actually change the dna structures in your skin and change the DNA structures of your plants. And nobody wants that, so take care. All right, so we got the basics down for UV light, right? We understand that it's broken down into three separate parts. A UVA, which is very beneficial and very prevalent. UVB, which we're not nearly exposed to as much as UVA. And UVC, which is a lot more powerful, a lot more dangerous and frankly doesn't make it to us, so we don't have to worry about that as much. Now that we know those three, let's focus on the two that are very important or super beneficial to our plants, and that's UVA and UVB. These two UV wavelengths have been shown to provide beneficial properties to certain plants. And depending on the plant, 
It can make them hardier, have a thicker cuticle, or improve photosynthesis. Another beneficial factor that has recently been identified is that they will produce almost like their own sunscreen or sun blocking mechanisms. But a broad term for these effects is secondary metabolites. These tend to occur when the plant is stressed out just enough that they start this production process to keep themselves a little safer. And some results of these secondary metabolites you can see things such as an increase in vitamins in some plants, or in others, terpene or essential oil production, which gives your plants a more robust and richer flavor and smell profile. Also, a stickier, a a stickier appearance and feel can occur in some plants when they're exposed to UV light. And I mean, who doesn't want stickier plants? So now that you're pretty much a UV light expert, it's time to get the ball rolling and get those plants booming. So we're gonna talk a little bit about how to safely get UV light into your grow room and into your plants routine. And don't forget, this is a fairly new topic in the growing world. I mean, people have been using UV lights, but the true science and the amounts and all of that other kind of stuff uh, isn't quite there yet, but we're well on our way. So we're gonna get into how to use UV lights with your plants. And it's a little trickier for us to try to find and harness the power of the sun. But I do have some tips for you that will hopefully make you successful. The first one being, don't forget, plants and humans are closer than you think. Just like if you were outside too long and get sunburned, it can happen to plants too. So it's really finding the right amount and the right timing to get the most out of that UV light. So one way scientists have found is the amount of time that they're exposed to UV light. What you want to do is called a pulsed UV method. So where you turn them on for a little bit, turn them off. Turn them on for a little bit, turn them off a couple times during your photo period. If you were to use that steady state UV method where you just had it on the entire time, what's gonna happen is your plants are gonna either one, they're gonna burn because they can't keep up with that UV intake or they're gonna evolve in a way that protects them from those UV lights and ultimately it's gonna over discoloration of your leaves which is gonna prevent that UV light to get in there. Some people like to run it at 100% for an hour and then off for a couple hours during the length of your grow. If you have a dimmable UV light, run that at 25%, starting when the plants are adolescents and then carrying that through. A third style is that some people like to have it back turned up to 100% only for a couple hours at a time during the last two weeks of your bloom stage. That way it's really gonna stress those plants out in a way that produces that sun blocking sunscreen technique and really accentuate some colors, some flavors, and the overall stickiness production of that sunscreen. And like I said, your plants are sensitive just like you, so you don't have to run it every day. But what you wanna do is run it at small bits at a time, see how your plants are reacting, and take notes. Adjust your scheduling, adjust the amount of light that's coming in. Because I mean, like if, you, if you've ever been to a tanning salon, they only let you go in for like maybe eight to 12 minutes. And anything longer than that, you're, you're coming out like a rotisserie chicken. <laughs> delicious, obviously, but your skin's crispy, you're dried out, and you know, that's you don't want that for your plants. So you have a couple different options of getting that UV light into your grow room. Uh, one of them being either a standalone light, such as like the Gavita, or you can get one that can be attached to an existing light, such as, you know, HLG makes one, or the Grower's Choice ROIE 720. They have bars that will go on there and attach, and you can kind of control them all in one, which makes grow room management manageable. And you're probably sitting there thinking, so what? I've never used UV light in my life. My plants turn out fine. You're probably right. They will turn out 
fine. Most LED fixtures do produce small amounts of UV light, primarily UVA because it's just on the tail end of that visible light, but it is a very, very low amount, almost negligible for the effects that it will have on your plants if you're really trying to get those increased secondary metabolites. So you're gonna be missing out on those sweet, sweet flavonoids. And since they're not being stressed out in the same way, I think it's important to note that they aren't as hardy, they don't become as rugged, and when those plants make those thicker cuticles, their water management becomes a little bit more easy to, you know, kind of navigate because they're protecting themselves from losing all that natural moisture that they have. And not being as rugged or hardy means they're susceptible to other stressors and even drought. Your plants will be all right, they'll be okay, but if you're interested in taking those to the next level, I think you might be interested in UV light. All right, I mean, that's pretty much it. So I have a quick conclusion for you just to make sure we went through everything super clear, concise, and help you with your grow. What's going on, everyone? Aaron here with Happy Hydro. Let's take that hobby of yours to a new level. Get back to growing with the complete beginner grow kit from Happy Hydro compiled by our experts with the best components in the market today. So head on over to happyhydro.com and check out our Grow Kit calculator to find the perfect fit for you. You'll be growing like a pro with Happy Hydro. So I got a little pros and cons list. First, the pros, that will make your plants a little hardier, a little bit more rugged. This will thicken the cuticle and make them a little bit more water efficient. UV light has been shown to increase flavonoids and secondary metabolites, such as those terpenes, vitamins, and other sticky substances that might be on your plant. And all of that's giving you a more fuller, robust plant profile. Now some cons with the lighting situation is that it is temperamental. You know, it's stronger than the normal light you're used to, so you have to play around with it a little bit. It's not an exact science, but they're working on it. Also, too much exposure will cause plants to become shorter, squattier, so if that's not your goal, just be aware of that. And like I said, large, long exposures to plants and humans alike can be damaging. Second part is how to apply those lights to your plants, and like we said, we talked about the pulsed UV method, which is a quick blast of light for your plants and then off. Blast of light for your plants and then off during your light photo period. And be sure to check those plants because if you see any burning occurring, change your schedule up. Not all plants are the same. So at the end of the day, if you're looking to take those plants to the next level, really increase those crops, it would be worth it to check into some UV lighting. Get yourself a setup, try out some different light routines, and get yourself some pretty sweet plants. That's all I got for UV light for you. I'd like to do a special shout out to Dr. Bruce Bugby at Apogee Instruments. He is an incredible human being on the information around UV light, uh, just a wealth of knowledge. So he's always a great reference to look at. And even the instruments that they use on their own testing are incredibly accurate. So if you wanna really hone in, take a look at some of those. Well, thank you guys for watching and uh, make sure we're liking this video, subscribe to the channel and uh, drop a comment down below if you have any tidbits about UV light or any questions you have for us. Until next time, stay happy, friends.